Hello, my name is Kevin Clay, and I am one of the Lean Six Sigma instructors here at Six Sigma Development Solutions Incorporated. Today, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to the IMR chart using uh, Minitabs version 20. Uh, just to give you a, a, um, a little background on the IMR chart. The IMR chart is, is a tool used to uh, identify both common cause variation and special cause variation. All right, it's, it's used to identify if there's abnormal variation happening in the process. Um, earlier, we, we uh, did a film, a producer film on the X bar and R chart. The X bar and R chart is looking at subgroups of two or more. We're interested more in understanding if the population of parts or services or transactions are uh, uh, exhibiting abnormal variation. In the IMR chart, we are uh, looking at a subgroup of one. Okay, in this case, we are looking at the individual unit if the, uh, to see if the individual part or service or transaction uh, is exhibiting abnormal variation. Uh, again, the IMR chart and the XMR and R chart are, are there to show us um, uh, common cause variation versus special cause variation. So uh, the data that you're looking at here is uh, from a fictitious project uh, that we provide to both our green belts and black belts uh, in their initial training. Uh, this fictitious project follows a fictitious company called Peanut Butter and Jelly Inc. Um, they have uh, uh, set some green belts on uh, uh, a problem. The problem is um, the fact that their their peanut butter and jelly sandwiches that they make, you know, hundreds of thousands of um, every day. There is, uh, it costs too much. It, the uh, cost for those peanut butter and jelly sandwiches are rising uh, and they're rising past their forecasted cost. So uh, something is wrong in, in the process. Uh, although they don't know what it is, that's why we're using Lean Six Sigma really to understand. So this fictitious project follows uh, this problem solving process from uh, define all the way through control in the Dominic process. Uh, in this case, we're looking at, um, uh, in the measure phase, we're looking at, is there a, uh, is there abnormal variation in, in the cost of um, uh, making our sandwiches? So uh, you'll see here, we've got two, we've got two different columns. Uh, we're going to be focused on the cost of the unapproved process. This is where we're going to look at the baseline um, uh, ability to control the process and look, look and see if there's abnormal variation in that cost. All right, so I, I'm going to show you how to do that. We're going to use the assistant. The assistant um, is a mini tabs tool that makes statistical analysis very easy for us. Um, we are going to move down to control charts. Uh, and then you'll see here, there's a number of control charts. Uh, we are gonna use the IMR chart. All right, you'll see here that it says data collected in subgroups. No, um, this is a subgroup of one. So we're gonna use the IMR chart. Uh, IMR stands for individual moving range chart. Uh, you'll see here that I've already got filled in. Um, the data column that we are going to evaluate is the cost of the unapproved process. Uh, it uh, gives us two options for uh, estimating or determining the, the control limits or the center or, and the center line. We're, we're going to estimate that from data. You do have the ability to put you, uh, known values in. Uh, there is a benefit to that. Um, if, if you uh, reflect what the real control limits are uh, consistently to, to put these control limits in once and set them and forget them. Uh, a lot of companies fall into this trap and our control limits 
uh, don't represent what what the actual control limits are. So therefore, the you know uh, the data that they're looking at is actually lying to them in most cases. So we are going to estimate from the data. All right. So this this looks at the actual data and estimates the uh, upper and low control limit uh, and the center line from from the actual data. Okay. We'll hit OK uh, or uh, click on OK. And we'll go all the way down to uh, the, report, the report card. So the report card really tells us uh, quite a bit of information about um, uh, the data and, and how good the data is in our analysis, uh, whether it's stable, whether it's normal, whether we have the right amount of data, uh, whether our, our data is possibly correlated, all right? So you, you can go in and kind of look at these, but the, the two we, we are really gonna focus on, actually three, is um, stability. Okay, I'll show you what that is. Um, uh, and the rule that we follow, it's called a weaker, uh, weaker rule. There are actually eight weaker rules. Uh, and uh, normality. So normality is, you know, does this fit in a normal distribution? And then we get into the amount of data. All right, so th this will show up in some of the other graphs that I'll show you. Okay, so we look at the stability reports, or the stability report. Um, Minitab looks at, uh, uh, there are eight rules that show instability. Uh, and because there are no red dots here, uh, this chart, uh, this data doesn't break any of those rules, okay? So if you want to learn more about what those rules are, you can go to Minitab uh, and, and do a search for out of control points or, or uh, WICO rules or um, out of control rules. Uh, th there's a lot of ways you can do that or test for special causes. I think that will probably uh, get you to the, to the, the right um, uh, information. So there's nothing here that is breaking those rules. If, it, if there were, you would see a red dot. Um, and we teach our green belts that of the eight weaker rules, we really only follow one. And that one, re uh, I'm sorry, that one weaker rule is a point that falls outside of the uh, control lines. Uh, there are seven other weaker rules that, you know, that uh, go more deeply into uh, how the, the process could be out of control. But again, we only follow that first weaker rule. Okay, so this says that we have a stable process and that report card earlier said we had a stable process. Okay, so we come up to the uh, summary reports. Uh, this just kind of consolidates all the information from the previous graphs. You'll see up in the upper left-hand corner is the process means stable. Okay, and because uh, there were no points that were out of control, uh, another word for that is a special, a special cause, uh, we have a stable process, therefore, we, we can you know, better trust uh, our mean and our standard deviation. If we had points that fell outside of those control points, uh, those could possibly skew our standard deviation and, and uh, we wouldn't really know what the uh, true standard deviation is. And those points, if they fall outside of that uh, control limit, we call those signals. Uh, the reason we call those signals is those could signal to us um, the, the potential cause for the problem that we are trying to resolve in Lean Six Sigma. Uh, I can tell you personally as, uh, you know, being a uh, master black belt for, for a while, uh, the uh, many projects that I've been on, those signals have led me to, uh, you know, the, the uh, area that I need to make a, a solution uh, and, and I have led to, you know, an uh, uh, actual solution to, to a project. So again, uh, we, we call those signals, but there are no signals here. Uh, this really takes us uh, looking at 
Lean and Six Sigma and understanding what, what are those key inputs that are causing the variation that we're seeing here. Okay, so IMR charts are widely used charts. Um, uh, they can be used in all part of, uh, parts of the DMAIC process. Every phase of the DMAIC, uh, they can be used in. They're very useful. Um, this is a skill set that you, it's absolutely necessary that you have is to understand uh, and use these charts. So uh, I hope that you uh, have gained a little bit more knowledge about the IMR chart. Uh, again, it's a very, very useful tool. Um, again, my name is Kevin Clay, and I'm one of the Lean Six Sigma instructors here at Six Sigma Development Solutions Incorporated. Uh, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate me uh, and my email, uh, which is kclay at sigsigmadsi.com. I will put that information down in the uh, description of this YouTube video. Um, and I hope that everybody uh, has a wonderful day. Thank you.